seconds five times and yell. All right. If you've learned a lot, can you clap your hands three times and yell like your mother slapped you? Okay, okay, okay. Let's get this started. Before we do, I have a special treat for the bold and the excited. I have a special treat. How many think you can do this? Nationwide is on your side. How many think you can do that? Let me see your hand if you think you can. Okay. We got four T-shirts in size extra, extra small. Just joking. So, all right, miss, let's hear it. You got to stand up. Ooh, Michelle. Oh, 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 here you go. Wow. Take somebody way over there. Who is it? Okay, you miss. Go ahead, please, please, right here. Yeah, yeah, stand up and let's hear it. Yes, here we go. Here we go. Now, take your time. Take your time. It's okay. Okay. You got some runners up coming up here. Okay. All right. Who's next? Okay. We'll go here and then here and then we're done. Please, you got to stand up. Take a deep breath, though. Take a deep breath. I want you to think about it. It's nationwide. Remember that, okay? You got it? You ready? It's all you. Oh. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Here we go. You got it? Ready? Here we go. All right. We got more. Ronnie, you going to participate? You sure? You, yeah, there's my wife here. She sings. Go ahead. Let's hear you. Stand up and do it. Okay, hold on. I, now I got to videotape it now. Hold on one second. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, Ronnie's belting out the nationwide song for the billion. Anyhow, go ahead, Ronnie. Nationwide is on your side. Oh, okay, okay. Woo. And I know somebody over here raised their hand. We don't have a T-shirt, but who wants to try it again? Now nah, nobody wants to try it. Wow, this is a black enterprise conference. Let me just stop right there. Everybody, welcome. So glad you're here today. My name is Ramon Ray. We are excited to serve you today at this session, and I'm glad you all are here. We have about an hour together, give or take, and I know we're going to dispense amazing, amazing information to you. I hope some of you have come with questions. We have the answers. Towards the end of it, we're going to facilitate a Q&A session. As Alfred Edmonds says, it's Q. And A, not preach, not testimony, not water baptism, not being filled, nothing like that. Just Q and A. So with that, let's start. And again, thank you to our panelists. I wasn't going to sit down, but since the chair's right behind me, I might as well start and cross my legs and be fancy like y'all too. So welcome, welcome. So glad you're here today. Why don't we just start with names, where you work, and what your role is in that company. Then we'll start off with some amazing tips and insights from our panelists. We'll start here. Please, Tara. Please, share us a little bit who you are, uh, what your company does, and then we'll turn to Quincy and the Michelle. Tara, please. Hi, I'm Tara Dowdell, and I am the president of Tara Dowdell Group, a company that I founded uh, a <clears throat> number of years ago. <clears throat> uh, and uh, we are a social good public relations and marketing agency, but I originally started my career in government. I worked in the governor's office in the state of New Jersey, and I was the director of appointments there, and that's the appointments to the boards and commissions. Port Authority Board, New Jersey Transit, all of that. And what I learned in that process is that people sit in rooms and determine who gets what, mm. who gets that slice of the pie. Mm -hmm. And so I was the first black person to ever hold that position and the youngest person ever to hold that position, still to this day. And I, was the, and I sat and I learned and I absorbed and I'm gonna share with you a lot of what I learned on that journey. But before I turn it over to my fellow panelists, just one question, I have a question for the audience. How many of you currently have government contracts? Great. Okay. We have a whole room full of open people to learn. Okay, all right. <laughs> just wanted to get a sense of, of the room. And so I'll turn it over to Quincy. Thank all you, Sarah. Right. Good Quincy, deal, please. thanks, Sarah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Quincy McGlown. I'm actually a director of sourcing and procurement at uh, FedEx Services. So. I uh, work at FedEx. Uh, we're a mover, a mover of packages and, and logistical services, back, mover of packages and goods throughout the, our, our immense network, network and uh, uh, also offer FedEx uh, logistic services. And um, yeah, happy to be here. Um, ecstatic about talking about from our perspective, right? Uh, being a source in the procurement for over 20 years, I get a chance to see uh, what happens in terms of a lot of those decisions and hopefully be able to give some insight and, and help uh, us get 
more slices of that pie. So I love it. And Quincy, thanks for being here. I love me some FedEx. Like, just when that FedEx truck comes around, it's like I'm a dog with seeing a bone or a ball, just like <laughs> wagging my tail. You know what I'm saying? Just and we appreciate that. Yes, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Can we give a hand to FedEx? All right, all right. Michelle, thanks so much for being here. Glad to have you with us. Help us understand your role and what you do. My name is Michelle Smith. I'm really happy to be here. I am a procurement director with Nationwide Insurance. And we not only sell auto and home, but we also offer retirement plans to businesses as well and have a line of uh, financial products. I sit in procurement and I have uh, responsibility for supplier diversity and procurement relationship management. Um, so I'm able to connect with a lot of our uh, decision makers and people who are really writing the checks um, to be able to connect them with diverse suppliers. And over the past couple of years, there has been an intense focus on being able to diversify our supply chain. So um, I'm really happy to be here and I'll turn it back over to you. And we're glad you're here, Michelle, as well. Michelle, I think we'll start with you. Can each of you just start right at the top? Some lessons you've learned, some things you've learned, experience you have, one or two or three tips right at the top because you're in this field. And I'm sure a lot of people here can learn from what your experiences have been. Michelle, why don't we start with you? A, give us some tips and insights. Feel free to give us a TED Talk. Or if you want, you can start off Ramon. Here's three things not to do. When we see this happening, we just go, ah, either one or all. Absolutely. So one thing I say in my seat, a lot of people just think we uh, sell auto and home. Mm. And I, will always, I always want people to really, that, that what we do is publicly available. Go out to the website, see what products and services that we sell, and then make the de informed decision of how your offering aligns with what we need. Because I can't tell you how many times I've had people say, so what does Nationwide do? Ooh. What, are you, what do you sell? They don't know that we're headquartered in Columbus, Ohio. So all this information is publicly available. And whenever you come with an informed value proposition of how your product and service aligns with the company, then you have, the, you have our ear. And it makes it easier for me to advocate for these businesses within um, Nationwide. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing is with corporations, you need to be certified. And so I've talked with a number of people who that's, that's very new, but for, an, uh, for us to be able to recognize diverse spending, you need to be certified and there are governmental agencies that govern these certifications. So for us to be able to report with some authenticity and integrity, that certification needs to be in place. And then uh, thirdly, and I'm probably still in a little bit of Taurus thunder, be open to second tier opportunities. Sometimes there's not a lot of opportunity to be able to interact directly with a supplier, but I can tell you our pipeline comes from that subcontracting value uh, supply chain. And I think that's so important about this, be open to second tier. I'm not going to say it in the same way that some of the panelists will. But I think the aspect sometimes, there's nothing wrong with reaching to the ceiling. But how many of you have done something lower, which led you to the side, if you get what I mean? You know, I've been at events before where I've just helped been picking up pizza. And they didn't know who I was. I didn't know who they were. But then, oh, you know what? Our speaker came late. So I went from picking up pizza to being on the panel. That's happened to me. Mm -hmm. Any of you know what I'm talking about? Okay, good. Is, any, is anybody here at the Black Enterprise Conference? <laughs> anybody here? Okay, we need probably have more t-shirts. Maybe that'll help. Okay, good, good. But that's so important, I think. Sometimes we want to say, go here. and We want our, our, our people to excel, but I think don't forget about there's a different way you can do it. Quincy, again, thanks for being here. Quincy, what have you seen? What's your experience been in procurement? This is your industry. This is what you do. Help us give us some insights and gems from your perspective. Yeah, sure. Um, one of the things, I'll, I'll piggyback uh, what Michelle said. I think it's really important to understand uh, who you're trying to do business with. And I can't tell you, and just to reiterate, how many times that happens when uh, a, a potential supplier uh, comes in and one of the first things they'll say is, I would love to do business with Federal Express. Well, we haven't been Federal Express since <laughs> 1980s or 90s, right? With FedEx, that's our brand. It is, Federal Express is the name of the corporation, right? And we were founded, but our brand is FedEx. So that tells me off the, ju off the jump that you don't know a lot about FedEx. You know, it's an $80 billion company. Um, more than 600,000 employees, 200,000 motor vehicles, 220 countries that we operate in. And really, if you break it down and you understand the organizational structure, it's really four primary operating companies, right, and businesses that we're in. We have an uh, express overnight delivery company. We have a small parcel ground, uh, two to three day business in the continental U.S. and Mexico and, and Canada. And then we've also got an LTL uh, uh, trucking company, right, uh, that, does, that operates in the U.S. 
in Mexico as, as well as Canada. And then we have FedEx Services, which supports all of those businesses with our marketing, sourcing, and uh, sales and IT organizations. So really you're talking about four distinct businesses and then there's even more businesses below those businesses, right? And so understanding who you're trying to do business with and you know what our business is is really fundamental. And then the other thing um, that, that, that I also say as it relates to you know, um, um, when you're trying to do business with a company and, and one of the things that, that, that I see is um, when you come in, sometimes going to the point that you made, uh, you have to come in and get a smaller slice mm -hmm. of the pie because there's so many things, you know, we spend, you know, billions of dollars um, uh, on an annual basis. And so sometimes getting your foot in the door and earning that trust allows you to get to uh, the, the, the bigger slices of the pie, and so that's really important. So, Michelle said something interesting, Quincy. She said kind of my word, help me help you. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you feel, and I'm gonna go back to Michelle, then I'm gonna come to you, Tara. How do you feel, Quincy, when, you, when somebody comes in, whether metaphorically or in your office, you wanna uplift them, you're with your other colleagues in the office, and they come in, for example, and they're like, Mr. Quincy, we are the best company for Federal, Ex Federal, Ex Federal Express. Federal Express. We can, we can do it, Mr. Quincy. H how does that just dig deeper into that? Yeah. You know, you're like, you're trying to set them up, but they come in and want to serve Federal Express. Yeah. And they printed it on all the logos, all the banners they brought right. to you, they printed right. Federal Express. How, right. What do you do with that? Well, I mean, again, it tells me that uh, this is a person that uh, potentially hasn't done their research, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't done the fundamental Google me, right, mm -hmm. and understood who it is you're trying to do business with, how do I have assurances of trust that you're gonna go that extra mile when it comes to mm -hmm. helping us uh, or delivering your service or your goods mm -hmm. to us so that we can in turn deliver them to our customer. At FedEx we have what we call a purple promise. I will make every FedEx experience outstanding. Yes. We don't make anything, we deliver customer experiences. And we really depend on our suppliers to help us deliver those customer experiences. So when you fail us, you ultimately fail our end customers, mm. and that's important to me. And so when you come in and you, you don't know the name of the company, then I don't have a lot of faith that you're gonna be able to help me deliver that purple promise to my customers. I love it, and then Michelle, if you don't mind, just echo on that, how do you feel? Meaning, maybe it's the same thing, but anything mm. to add, like when, you know, when people come in, uh, Michelle, can you tell me where again, where are you headquartered? How does that, you know, do you, how does it make you feel, just that person who's trying to get your business, their right. first contract, and you had to tell them something that simple as what products you have or where you're based. How does that? You know? Yeah, it makes me question um, their credibility to really do put in the research. When you're trying to develop a relationship, you really want to find out as much research as you can so you can come in and have an informed conversation. Yeah. And it's important to be able to leverage the resources at your disposal um, to be able to present. So, you know, a lot of times they'll ask me that or they won't, won't even have a capability statement. So I have nothing in hand to be able to try to connect the dots and use the business acumen I have about the company to be able to advocate for them. So um, as, as I would say, just research mm -hmm. and show that you care about the company and wanna do business with them. And then that, will, that, that starts to, hit, to build trust. Because I think relationships are the secret sauce to yeah. procurement. Yeah. Um, and even once you're in the door and you become that trusted advisor, a corporation will be willing to pay just a little bit more because the relationship is there. Yeah, yeah that's so true. Tara, please, your experiences, you have a lot of experience behind this, what you've done, share with us and take your time, that story and what you've done and your tips for us, please. So I would say, first of all, I was not as prepared when I first started my government contracting journey and my big corporation contracting journey. I'll be completely transparent with you. My house was not fully in order, despite the fact that I came from government. So the first thing I would say is to the point that was made earlier is have your marketing materials. Mm -hmm. And they need to be tight. Don't get your cousin to do them. <laughs> don't, get, don't get your best friend that knows how to use Canva really well. Don't do them yourself. You don't have time. You need to be running your business. But put a budget together, a realistic budget, and determine how much money you need to spend to have high quality marketing materials. And I mean, that is a real investment because you wanna put that deck in front of these two people and you want that deck to showcase you and to showcase what you bring to the table and to wow them, right? So that's the first impression they get. 
So you want to be able to sit that down in front of them with that great business card. I would recommend Move. Um, I might be pronouncing it wrong. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I like Move. Yep. My cards are Move. Yep. Exactly. Ours are too, like for your printing, but really invest in that. So that would be the first thing I would say, because that's the first impression, because the first entry point you have is to the point that was made earlier with government in particular, there are some in some states and some cities, if you are below a certain amount of money, they can just give it to you. They can say this can go to you and it won't be it's not going to make you rich, but it will get your foot in the door. But you won't even get that without the right marketing materials that will let you build that relationship and build that trust. So they feel comfortable saying, OK, we're just going to give this to you. And then the second thing I would say is have your paperwork in order. And, and let me and I want to say that again, mm -hmm. have your paperwork in order. And so when you do the process, I'm certified with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey as minority and woman owned. I'm disadvantaged business certified with New Jersey Transit and I'm certified minority and woman owned business with the city of New York. And so that process is a beast. I'm not going to lie. See, I see some of y'all nodding and I know there was a panel earlier on this. That process is a beast. But at the end of the process, even though I was cursing and screaming throughout it, mm. I was so tight mm -hmm. because I had everything I needed to go to the next level once I completed that process. So you will go through that process if you haven't already and you will be frustrated and uh, you will be upset and you may not want to complete the process, but it will make sure that you have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted. And then the third thing I would say uh, moving on is actually Nationwide is on your side. Go ahead. No, I can't sing. No, I can't. Go ahead. Let's do it. Go no, ahead. Go the ahead, girl. Why, the reason why I say that is because get insurance. Get uh. your general liability coverage. Most government requires one million, two million policy. And then as you get up there in the government contracts, we now have a lot larger contracts. So I need auto. I need umbrella. Some of them are requiring cyber. But start with the foundation is that one million, two million dollar policy. And you got someone right here <laughs> who can help you get that. But that's gonna be really important because the problem is with these big corporations and government is you have to indemnify them, mm -hmm. which to me is crazy, but it's the process. And given the size of the contracts that you will open yourself up to, it will ultimately be worth it. So those are my three tips for now. I got like 10,000 more, but for now, <laughs> you know, those we, are my three. We got my, time. You can say all 10,000. That's my opening foray. <laughs> Tara, I love this. I want to go point by point with you for a few minutes on each one of these points. You talked about the trust and relationship. Why is that so important? Meaning, is it the brand relationship? Am I indeed trying to make a relationship with Quincy or Michelle? Talk about how you define that relationship and the trust, because I'm sure it's a bit of an emotion. We talk about brands. Oh, it's nationwide and, and smart hustle. But in a way, I'm thinking you're saying it's Michelle and Ramon. We're all human. Talk about that a bit. So I have to be careful uh, with some of the way I know Michelle going to be mad at me. Um, but, but I have to be careful because a lot of the folks that you want to interface with in these capacities to get this work are not going to be looking like us. And, uh, and they have certain impressions, mm -hmm. sure. right? Uh, and, and they do business a certain kind of way, right? Like, I, I got to go to lunch, I got to do this, I got to do drinks, I got to, right? So, there, so I would say the relationship is critical. Mm -hmm. So we have a client right now that's one of the largest transportation infrastructure companies in the country. And if it were up to them, I'd be on five projects. My agency would be on five projects right now. We literally don't have the capacity to handle what they, all the stuff they would want to bring us in. But once they get, <laughs> forgive me, but once they get that, that, black firm that they really like, <laughs> they, they don't want to give you all the business, right? So, I mean, it's the truth. I'm being, I'm being, people who know me, I'm transparent, I'm direct. That's how it goes. But that's the relationship. And then what happens is, though, the beauty of it is that you can then open the doors for others of us because now that relationship is there. So I can't take it, but I'm like, hey, my girl, so-and-so has uh, a marketing agency. She can do this work. But that relationship is so important. So I think understanding the culture of the brand, whether it be the government, it's all brands, whether it be the corporation, sort of understanding the culture and how they do business. And you'll get a, a sense of that. And being ready to like meet up with golf outings, right? I don't golf, so I, I skip that part of it. But being in the mix in the way that people conduct their relationship building and business building activities. 
And so I'm, I'm, I'm being somewhat artful here, not as artful as y'all probably want me to be, but I'm being somewhat artful here. But understanding that culture, building that relationship, because once that relationship is in place, once that trust is in place, mm -hmm. your business will just soar because even with government, if they know you're gonna do well for them, then they don't want, they're risk averse. They're not gonna wanna try other people, right? They're gonna wanna try the folks that do the good job for them that they can count on and they can trust. So that relationship is critical. I got this from the documentary, thank you so much for Mr. Graves, I think I'm quoting it quite right, so give me some forgiveness here. I'm gonna say a statement from what, based on what you said, and then Tara, I'd love your opinion, Quincy and Michelle. So what do you, what do, you do, and then I have to think how to say this, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with somebody coming up? Quincy, I'm coming up to you. Yo, listen, brother, do me a solid. I mean, listen, you know, come on, yo, you know, come on, you know, you just, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying, right? You, you, you know, yo, your grandmother's still doing good. She's good. Yeah, okay, I saw you in church, you know. So do me a solid. Can you just cut that check for a million, right, just re real quick? You know, just brother to brother, just, you, you know what I'm saying, you know? You know what I'm saying, my homeboy, yeah, man, just like that. If you don't know where I'm going, now, but my marketing, by the way, is not on point, Quincy, okay? I want you to know my yeah. marketing's not on point. And, and I called y'all Federal, Federal Express, okay? And there's a line of people outside the door still, white, Spanish, Chinese, all great companies. Right. But, yo, brother, do me a solid. So I'm going to start with you, Tara, first. What, what does Quincy and Michelle do with that? How do we, if you get what I'm going, meaning because I think some of us, we think, oh, just do me a solid. Yeah. How do you address that? What, what, is you, what are you, not, not addressing Quincy and Michelle, but us, so that I, issue. So it's, uh, I mean, even as a small business owner, I've actually had a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I've had it from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> because working in government, my former government colleagues come and they're like, hey, give me a stop, right? right. So, but I think that, um, that, that first and foremost, again, I always, I try to, to the extent that I can impart knowledge and mentor, to the extent that I can and have the bandwidth to do so, I just share with people, at the end of the day, let your work yes. lead the way, and yeah. also listen to criticism. And that's because, what I was getting at, let your work lead the way. I just wanted to underline that. Yeah, Being let as your work lead everybody the way, else. but more importantly, listen to criticism, because I remember when I first started doing proposals, I had all this, like, I'm, I'm a talker and I'm a writer. Like, I, most people don't write a lot and talk a lot, I do both. Um, and so I had written this, like, voluminous proposal, and it was like a Word document, and um, my uh, boy hooked me up. He did give me the hookup. I go to this meeting. I do all the right things on the relationship side. Then I get my proposal. And it was well written, but it was a Word document. Mm. So I uh, didn't get the business. And so I called uh, my friend uh, and, he, and I said, what, you know, I don't understand what happened. We had a great lunch. I paid for the lunch, right? Like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, he was interested. He liked my experience, all that. I don't understand why I didn't get this client. And he said, oh, your proposal sucks. Now, I wouldn't say it to somebody like that personally, but that's what he said. And I was so, I got defensive and I didn't listen to him. And then I got about three months later, someone brings me in. They say, we want you to be a part of a team bidding this work. And um, we'll all submit our proposals. And then the main people will merge the proposals into one document. So the first group submits their proposal. And I was like, oh, that's mm -hmm. what they're supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And I realized in that moment that I was dead wrong, that while I had written a good proposal, people want to see images and graphics. They want the content to be there, but they want you to impress them yes. with, with images and graphics. And so I think when, those, when you have these experiences, when people, you know, you know, they know you're good, right? And then you don't know why they're not, you know, hooking you up because they know you're good. But if they offer you, ask them the, for criticism. Like, ask what you could do better. Like, so when you meet with some, if you don't get the business, always ask, what could I have done to earn your business? Mm -hmm. And take that advice. And now I do. When people, cri I get defensive at first. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm a growth, but I'm still evolving. <laughs> but I do, after I get defensive in my head, I then go back and I recalibrate and I look at, what I could do better and realize that most people that look like us, if they're giving you criticism, it's because we want you to win. Mm -hmm. Even if that criticism comes in a way like your proposal sucks, um, it's still, we want you to win. So. I love it. Fun. Quincy, uh, thank you. That was, can we give her a round of applause? Yeah, that, was really good. that was amazing. That was amazing. Yeah, I, I, think, that, I think that was on point, yeah. right? Uh, if, if I'm doing you a solid yeah. or, or you're somebody um, that I'm talking to that, that I want to win, then the, the best thing I can do is tell you the truth, yeah. right? 
And again, going back to the example that you had there, if you're coming in and talking about Federal Express doing you a solid and all yeah. these things based upon the way it's presented, right, right you're probably not ready, yeah. right? And there's some things that you need to work on. And so me giving you that truth will help because at the end of the day, um, it's all about what is the what do you bring to the table, right? Um, when you talk about your good or your service that you're bringing, it has to be top tier, right? That's who we do business with. Mm -hmm. And so you, the table stakes is just, just to get there, you have to have a good, uh, a, a good service or a good good that you're bringing to the table in order to just even talk about being, uh, being in the room to compete. And so, you know, that's table stakes. And so um, the, the, the other thing that goes along with that from my perspective is allowing you to know how does the process work, right? What are the things um, that we go through? What are the things that we're looking for? Making sure that you get that feedback if what you present or what you brought to the table um, doesn't measure up to what we're looking for. And that to me is, the, is, is, is my role, right? Um, of course, I want um, you know, everyone to win. I always say I like my suppliers the same, like them and dislike them the same, right? Because at the end of the day, it's about making sure that you do the best job for FedEx. But I do have a, a, a role to make sure that I'm also trying to help our suppliers make sure that they're delivering uh, the best goods and services to FedEx because ultimately we all win when that happens. And of course, being a black man, um, part of that is, and, and FedEx has been out in front of this, right? Making sure that uh, we understand how important it is that the suppliers that we have look like the customers that we have, mm -hmm. which looks like our supply, our employee base, mm -hmm. right? So we operate in 220 countries. So mm -hmm. we want to look like our customers, look like our employee base, and have that, you know, uh, suppliers look the same way. And so there is that portion of it. And for me, that's about making sure that you understand what the process is and have that truth and have that feedback when yeah. you don't measure up. Right? By the way, you operate in how many countries? 220 countries. By the way, if you ever need, like, me and, and my wife to accompany a package to Hawaii or Aruba. Okay, you gotcha. know, if you just a small package, not too heavy, you need I to gotcha. take it there for you. I can't fly the plane, but <laughs> just call me, please. Let me, like on the beach or something, you need us to take it to the hotel. Let, let me know. I'm, a, I'm available. I, I keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm on the uh, back end side. Oh, you flyer. <laughs> you got to go to the procurement. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't move the packages. But I see. I keep okay. that in mind. Call me, please do. <laughs> Michelle, how do you feel, Michelle? Most people, everybody here is first class and doing their bus. But going through the conversation, I said, somebody's trying to, hey, Michelle, can you buy five million? million of my widget, five million or whatever it is for nationwide, and it's just not meeting the mark. It's not quality, but they're trying to go to the angle of, come on, Michelle, come on, come on, you know, wink, wink. How does he feel, and just explain, talk more about that aspect of, yes, we want you to win, but you have to set Michelle up to help you win. Talk about that, Michelle, you know? Absolutely, so nationwide, one of the things we pride is our brand, um, and um, just like Quincy was talking about, we want our um, supply chain to really represent the markets that we serve. Um, and so it's the quality of your pro product needs to be commiserate with the price. Um, and in order for us to be able to advocate, because um, you know, I'm working with executives. So Kara talked about you know, your presentation. Executives need to be able to consume something very quick and it needs to be substantive and it needs to be a polished uh, presentation. Um, so when you put in the work to do that, that gives us the, the comfort of knowing the quality and the product that you're going to provide um, will be commensurate, will reflect that as well. Um, and so in order for us to be able to diversify our supply chain, because I have people asking all the time, and we're even getting data requests. I mean, this has become an industry standard. How much business are you even doing with black businesses? And we want to be able to say with integrity that we do have black business in our supply chain that we can trust with our brand to be able to provide products and services. So although we want to be able to, what you call do a solid, mm -hmm. we have to have something substantive. It has to be competitive. Just like if you go on an interview, you wanna show your best self. You wanna do the research um, on the company and be able to make, help them make the connection, how your skills, your product and services align with their, with their, with their business model. And I think that is powerful and I wanna say that because again, being the community that we are, Competition is fierce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are not the only diverse group in the world. Right. There are veterans, some in this room, God bless you, of all walks of life. Mm -hmm. There's women, which is a whole separate category. And there's women who are not in this room, who are not black, who are women. Mm -hmm. So I mean, <laughs> do you think of the amount of segments there are that we are, as it were, in a good way, competing with, if you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a huge, huge group that we're in. Competition is fierce. 
So I think that's one thing that I hear throughout the conversation sometimes. I'm black, do me a solid, things like that. I get it. But dear black po folks, we can't, I'll say this, we can't just hang, hey, Quincy, I'm black, do me a solid. It don't work. Mm -hmm. It don't work. Especially on a move to the second one, let's talk about the marketing materials and how you represent yourself. Too many times I've been, people have the good quality, you're doing your best, you have the products and services, but how much does it take if your website don't work? If what you're wearing to the thing. So let's go review and maybe talk about that metaphorically or stories you can think of. Tara's there, you're trying to talk to Tara, she's in charge of procurement, and she's trying to refresh your website. Or your website, like mine does, has typos in it. What are you going to do? Tara, talk about how you present yourself in the marketing material just at get-go. You know, 3 a.m., Quincy's finished helping his kids, or you finished at 2 a.m., mm -hmm. softball, and you, okay, let me scroll this, you know, this vendor and see. And now what you're seeing already is, you know, their social media is not on point or website. Talk about that a bit, Tara. So we, we're a marketing and PR agency, so this is, this is really my, uh, truly my lane. But I think that a couple of things, Inve when I said earlier, invest in really high quality marketing materials, do the same with your website, right? So if you don't have the money to do uh, you know, a multi-page website, just do a, a clean one-page, three-page website. But we have a rule in my office, and I, I know I might be preaching to the save with this, but I do think, <laughs> you know, if, if, you, if you're already doing this, think of it as a reminder of a best practice. But we have a second set of eye rule in my office. So nothing leaves our office until a second set of eyes that has not originally looked at that document is checked. So we are known for our attention to detail. And, and so that's something that people come to us because they know we're going to meet deadlines. They know the attention to detail is high. I can be a little, like, you know, some people you know, I have attitudes sometimes, so I got to work on that. No. But, um, <laughs> but no, but, um, but my team is very much, that's how we function. So I think it's really important to have, like, these redundancies mm. in your, with your work. So no matter what you do, if you are sending it or going to, a meeting, any kind of presentation, anything you're sending out that's going for a, a big contract or any contract, make sure, even if, you, if you're if you busy, make sure someone with a high attention to detail reads it over. When I first started my business, my best friend from college, Narissa, who ran the proposals department at, um, at an, insurance, <laughs> an insurance company, mm -hmm. she would look over my proposals because I didn't have a staff. So I would call her and I would send her the proposals, I would send her everything and she would look at it. So I think first and foremost, second set of eyes. Or even if it's really important, third set of eyes. Because that's something that people, the second they see a typo, which is easy to do if you're busy and it's a voluminous proposal or a presentation, I think also decks are an easy way to do marketing that's l lower cost, right? Le and it's, it's visually, um, visually appealing. So I think that's really um, important. And then I would say the other thing I would say is, yes, presentation does matter, right? People, whether it should or shouldn't matter, I, you know, I think that, you know, we, we, give, we put standards on our community that we shouldn't put on our community, but presentation does matter, particularly with government, because, again, they're risk averse. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where, and the reason why I'm emphasizing government contracts is because we are doing, um, so a couple of things. The infrastructure bill you all know about from the Biden administration. And just one quick aside. Please. There is something called Justice 40. If you have not had a chance, look up Justice 40. What that means is Justice 40 is something that the a president and vice president have said that this infrastructure money, 40% of it, has to go back to communities like ours. So, that, so they're leaving it to the states to do it. But that has to happen. So what that means is they're going to be looking, people, the big um, infrastructure companies are going to be looking for people like us to be subcontractors. So when Michelle talked earlier about don't be afraid to be a tier two, being a subcontractor to a major infrastructure company is a lot of money. That's huge. It's, it's not like you're not a tier, I mean, you're not a tier two in the sense of like you, you can make a lot of money. Also, these infrastructure contracts are four years, six years, eight years, 10 years, depending on the project, you could be on one project for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And imagine having a bunch of them alongside each other, and all you're doing is perfecting your model for each contract, right? And replicating the work that you're doing. They're, the company that we work with right now, the big infrastructure company we work with, we're a sub on these um, projects, these federal, um, federal, state, local projects, that's all they do. They literally don't do anything else but government contracts, and they are a multi-billion dollar company. Come on now. 
And so what I do is I watch every single thing that they do and I replicate it. The way they prepare for a presentation is now how we prepare for a presentation. Every lesson, I, everything I see them do, I replicate every single thing that they do. We rehearse before we go into a presentation now. Before we had people kind of write down what they were gonna say, we go into it. Now we have like full blown rehearsals. Everybody knows, like everybody on my team has like three lines that they know to say, no matter what situation we're in, in case we get too busy and can't rehearse, they have their three lines of how to describe themselves and what they do. We also have pre-prepared proposals. Close, cover your ears. <laughs> we, we customize them, we customize them for the client so they don't think they're getting a cookie cutter proposal, yeah. but pre-prepare stuff. Yeah. Have your narrative about your business ready to go so that all you have to do is tweak it no matter who your audience is. Have your deck ready to go so you do it in PowerPoint, download it in, um, in PDF, have the designer give you the template and put the spaces in for you to fill in the content so it looks tight and you can customize it each time. Easy way to save money and to present well. And then the last thing I'll say is, I said this earlier, y'all didn't laugh, that's okay. I do sometimes, I can get a little, this is something I'm learning, I can get a little defensive, I said it earlier, with clients, also know your shortcomings. Yes. So sometimes I'm not the right person <laughs> to talk in a certain situation because I can get a little, little, you know, attitude, right? Like, and so I also know your shortcomings and when you build a team, have people that supplement those shortcomings. Like there's some meetings I don't go in because the, the person that get to me and I, I, I get a little, animated shall we say <laughs> so, Quincy, if you if you have a meeting with Tara and you don't see her in the room well I'm just saying <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm just saying I'm not gonna it say is. more I'm just saying Tara that was amazing and I, I, let me ask you a question by the way uh, Lisa can you remind me are we going to the mic or you'll go to people okay cool so just we're gonna have questions in a few minutes but I'm curious how many of you all feel more hopeful right now than you did 30 minutes ago okay okay how many of you know, and you can confess, you can confess right now that you didn't get the last project, not because you were black, but because you're pro you were inferior? How many know that? Two people confessing. God bless y'all. And the rest of y'all are lying. I know it for sure. Really? Because you heard what Tara said. She practices. She has to up her game. So how many of you know that there's room you have to up your game? Oh. Yes, <laughs> yes, <I'm not> <laughs> competition is fierce as a speaker myself. Mm -hmm. This is the game I'm in. I'm not the only speaker in the world. So I know when Mindy or Michelle or Quincy's calling me for my speaker's fee, they got three back there. And you know who else I'm in competition possibly? Damon John, Marcus Limonis. That's the fact. So if you can't bring your A game, why play the game? Why? Why sit and cry to your kids, mama can't buy milk, just because you couldn't get typos done? You ever heard of Grammarly? It's free. Really? So am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's go on that again, uh, Quincy Cures. How do you feel, Quincy, when you tell people, send it to me overnight, it got to reach me the next day, and the package comes, and it don't say FedEx on the package? How do you feel, Quincy, when things like that? How does that make you, the, the lack of detail yep. or not awareness, that, how does that make you and the team you know, feel? Yeah, ab absolutely, right? Um, doesn't automatically uh, get the package thrown out, but it, it's, it's definitely <laughs> noted, right? Um, but no, it, it's, it's, you know, it goes back to it and, and, and what Tara was saying, right? It's um, brand, right? So again, going back to the original statement that I had earlier, it's about knowing who you're trying to sell to. And mm -hmm. when you talk about, FedEx, that's one of the things. We are an extremely brand conscious company, right? And as I'm sure a lot of companies are, right? Uh, you think about, um, you know, FedEx and, you know, think about the trucks that you see and how that looks like the packaging, which, you know, correlates to the uniforms that you may see on the couriers. And, you know, then you take that to the, uh, the, the marketing material you may see or advertisements that you'll see um, um, on, on a TV, right? And then you think about the, all of the, uh, other brands that we partner with when you talk about sponsorships, the NFL, uh, FIFA, um, you know, all of these big brands. We are extremely brand country, uh, conscious mm -hmm. company. And so, you know, again, table stakes is you've got a top tier good of service that allows you to get considered in the door, what have you. What separates you is when you're able to 
tell your story in a way that resonates because you understand the listener, the, re the receiver of the story, and you're able to get their attention. And so you can get consideration, yeah. right, uh, on, on what you're trying to do. And so that all goes down to brand and you understanding your brand and how, to, how it correlates and how you sell it. Because if you come in and you aren't aware of your brand or you aren't able to sell it and articulate it, then you can have a top tier good of service and it doesn't do you any good or me any good because we, we, we don't get a chance to get there because you haven't, uh, you haven't gotten through uh, to, to, to make it resonate uh, with your intended audience, right? Yeah. So, so that's a big thing um, uh, in terms of brands and, and understanding that and being able to represent that. I want to talk about defensiveness, and Michelle, I want to come to you, but can you talk about that as well? Tara, I think you said a good point there. Sometimes I've been in that scenario. In fact, just last week, uh, somebody <laughs> wanted me to be a marketing strategist, and they had me talk to their advisor. It was like some 102-year-old guy who like knew it all. He had a gravelly voice, okay, young man, so you want to do this? Really, why? He was grilling me, and I was getting tight. I'm like, you're talking to Ramon Ray. I'm going to be on a Black Enterprise stage next week. Do you know who I am? I mean, I can even do nationwide is on your side. Yeah. I mean, really, y'all got to get a jingle, and we'll hook that up, okay? So point being is that I was getting tight, but you know what I realized? He was just pushing me, I think. Because after a while, every question he answered, I said, no problem, sir, here's the answer. And a few minutes through our conversation, you could, he was still gravelly. But he was like, okay, young man, I like this, I like this. I was like, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. He was just pushing me. Mm -hmm. And so my point is, Michelle, can you just touch on that? I'm curious if you don't mind. And then I'm like, oh, uh, you know, Michelle, I'll turn to you, then Quincy. But this aspect of pushback and, and critique and helping people, have you found maybe people in your experience that are like, they didn't want to listen? Or maybe you talk about people who, you know what, this is a story, you don't say their name, but who did listen to you and maybe came back and succeeded. Can you share anything like that with us? Absolutely. One thing is feedback is a gift. And people don't have to give you the feedback. Mm. They could just not give you business and you don't know why. Mm. So if you get feedback, it's definitely a gift. Um, and I want to double click. So we talked about in my role, um, you know, advocate for suppliers. And then they say they get included in the RFP. And Tara talked about proposals. It's the hardest thing when the proposal is substandard. And you, if you have things in there like typos or, you know, not, not knowing what our vision and mission are. So we exist to protect people, businesses, and futures. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you give them feedback or they, sometimes you give them feedback and they get defensive and then they pull the black card, yeah. it, 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 mm -hmm. it's, um, mm -hmm. it's infuriating yeah. to be quite honest. And because there's, there's many other suppliers we have who have, had, who have asked for feedback, they don't look like us, mm -hmm. they take that feedback and they incorporate that feedback. Mm -hmm. And what Nationwide tries to do too, is for people who are open to that feedback, we try to mentor and pair them with executives who are in their industry to really help to develop. So I would say feedback is a gift and it's about the relationship. The way you respond, people remember that. If they see that you're gonna take the feedback, that means if you're gonna provide a quality of service, we wanna be able to know we have input and to how that's delivered, we may need something customized. So we're looking at how you respond. I love it, that's powerful. I was curious, thank you so much. Does anybody have questions at this time? Does anybody have, good, we have a few. So I think, right, we're going, yeah. So come to the mic right here. I'll set it up, I'll give you all two. Okay, we already have someone here, great. So come there, and let me just be clear here. I get this from Alfred Edmund. Please don't preach. <laughs> we only have one TD Jakes. <laughs> Please don't give your testimony. If you want to give, you know, a little bit about context, but try to be as brief as you can. We have a lot of questions. We're so glad you're here. Queen, please. Good afternoon. My name is Corinne Green. I'm the owner of HR Mom, Human Resources Managers on the Move. We help small business provide um, human resources functions for small businesses. So my question is, we are at the stage where we've gone through the entire certification process. We have our um, Women and Minority Business um, Enterprise Certification, which just came through last night, which I was so excited to get. Congratulations. Um, thank you. That's awesome. Um, so my question is, um, how, what advice would you give to an organization like mine that's getting overwhelmed in the process 
like not knowing where to start, how do we get access to those relationships, and then overall what to expect from the process of procurement. And what we'll do, panelists, if you don't mind, you can just by hand or, you know, amongst ourselves, one of us can try to answer if we can, just since we have so many questions, let's all three have something different, but one of us can pick it up, I'm sure all of you can answer the question. Who wants to answer the question, but she's feeling overwhelmed with the process. Who wants, I'm guessing, Tara, if I may turn that to you, because you've gone through the process, she's feeling overwhelmed, so much paperwork, so much work, she's ready to give up, right? But she's like, no, let me. I'm not ready to give up. I'm just <laughs> ready. <laughs> I'm not, she's oh, ready to press forward up. then. <laughs> I just need to know Man, how I do I get access to I got relationships you. for the process. Like I, I have my capability statement right here. Okay, let, work, I just want to uh, um, uh, advertising and marketing award from the Philadelphia Flyer, Ooh, which they gave me a hundred thousand dollars in advertising and marketing assets. I'm trying to get them. To I got you. I got that. you. You are not giving up. In. I got you. Tara, take it away. Give her some advice. You can. I would say start with the Philadelphia Flyers for some business, right? Because they have now they've shown you won this award, so you have credibility with them. They gave you this free advertising, but I would say start with them. See if you can get a meeting with their procurement professionals. If you have, have you done that yet? Yeah, I would say start with them. You want to start with the people who already know yeah. you and know your worth and know your value. They even may want to do more PR with you as a marketing firm. Like we look with our company, with our clients, we look for folks like you to, to do marketing campaigns, to showcase our clients' work, right, and, and, and their uh, philanthropy. So I would say start with the procurement people there. Navigate through the folks that you worked with on this uh, $100,000 and ask them to connect you with uh, the procurement folks, have a meeting and, and let them and f first figure out how you think you can fit in with them, right? Uh, and then have a meeting with them because I would start there. Also, I want to make sure that all your marketing materials reflects the fact that you've won this uh, award. Yes. Do they? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, all right. And, um, and was there any PR around this? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so making sure that whatever your, it's all reflected in your marketing materials too, like all of it, like the PR, the clips, the, all that. Well, we and just started it last week because okay. we just got the award. So listen, what you need April. to do, Tara, where you live at? What state are you in? <laughs> what? We're, we're based in Jersey too. And where are you at? I'm here in Philadelphia. You need to take Tara to lunch. <laughs> yes. And, and Quincy and Michelle too after that. We'll take her to lunch, but really, but thank you, Tara, very much. Thank you, Miss, very much. A lot of questions. Thank you very much. Next question, please. Hi, good. Good afternoon, my name is Solyndria Walker. I'm the CEO of Premature Driveway Transportation Company. My background is in government contracting. So my question is, for the private sector, what are the parameters that you have in place to ensure that biases aren't taking place in um, the evaluation committee? So how to make I, sure that biases are not taking place. Michelle, yes. any guidances on that? Uh, you know, what any in things you have in place? That Nobody's being biased or discriminated against or unfairly. Correct. Anything. Like, for example, in government, we have the cone of silence, sure. those things, and to okay. make sure people aren't talking. So I just want to know in the private sector, what are the initiatives that you have in place? And congratulations, by the way, on your success. Michelle, any Thank thoughts? You. Oh, yeah, I can um, take, take a stab at that. Within our procurement department, we have value metrics. So for one, we need to make sure we have a certain percentage that we are, are including um, diverse suppliers and, and including, and then also those who win businesses. So a lot of times during the RFP process, they will include someone from my team okay. to make sure it's a fair and equitable um, field and being able to compete for business and also to being considered. And if they are not selected, we ask the question why? And we don't do that a lot for non-diverse uh, suppliers to be able to provide that feedback. And then we try to connect them with the resources so they can um, have have some capability uplift as they're competing. I love that. Thank Beautiful. you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Who's next? Awesome. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Kamiki Campbell. I'm host of the Black News Beat and the executive director of Young Professionals of Color Greater Harrisburg. My question is, can y'all say more? Can y'all say more about how you switch it off when it's time to get the feedback? I am horrible at this. And um, I feel like part of it is I'm a, always in activist mode. And when it's time to get into more the receiving mode is what I'll say, it's very hard to kind of switch back and forth. So how do y'all do it? You guys seem to have mastered that. So how do you do it? I love it. Quincy, what do you say? How do you, what's your, been your experience getting feedback maybe as a, yeah. as a younger professional or, or, or give us some advice? I, I would say, um, thank you. you know, I'm big on, and we're big on this uh, culturally in, in my organization, it's about um, knowing your audience Right, and so in order to know your audience, you have to you know listen to them and, and pay attention and understand uh, what it is they're looking for. 
And so, at least for me, um, in terms of feedback, the biggest thing to me is about um, trying to understand and learn from that person so that, um, you know, as I'm going into that, I think you call it the activist mode or whatever it may, may be, you've got all the resonant uh, 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 facts that you need, right, in order to convert that so that the next time you get that opportunity, um, it resonates more with the person that's listening to it. So, you know, to me, it's all about knowing your audience and in order to know your audience, you have to, you know, take it back or dial it back a minute and make sure that you're listening to what they're giving you in terms of that feedback. So, I think it's a great question. And one thing, feel free to come up, is that I think a coach, I don't know, I know I've had some professional coaching before and that's helped me, just somebody externally to say, Ramon, mm -hmm. here's some tips, here's some thoughts. So, you know, then you get practice mm -hmm. um, with that other person. And if you're not married, if you get married, my wife is here, <laughs> that, that's a way too to help get mm -hmm. critique and feedback. Yes, All right. Is. So, <laughs> next. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Chris Harper. I'm the founder of the Tesseract Group. We are an influencer marketing firm based in the Philadelphia Tri-State. Uh, so my hey Chris, I'm sorry Chris. May, may I just give one word of advice to all of you who are here? This is your quick shot at some, some time and one small tip, if I may, may I do that Chris for you, may I? Oh, of course. One, one, one tip is that you all know your businesses intimately, the name. We've never heard them before, we don't. So a tip. If I was working for Black Enterprise, hey, my name is from BlackEnterprise.com, we did, no. My name is Ramon, we're from Black Enterprise Magazine. We highlight black professionals. My question is, just a thought, say your company name slower. Quincy may be in the shower today and be like, what's that company again? I got an extra million. So, I'm, it's really, it's a tactical tip. You all know your company names. But say it slow so we can get that name in that plug. It's just a tip for you all, right? That's your minute right. so we can hear the company name. Oh. Thank you. Well, right. Chris, the floor is yours. My name is Christopher Harper. I'm the founder of Tesseract Group, influencer marketing firm, specializing working and promoting uh, influencers of, of color. Uh, we're based in the Philadelphia Tri-State area. And my question for you is beyond word of mouth and cold pitching, what is the best way to get on that RFP email list? Great question. Yeah, good question. So first and foremost, to get on that RFP email list, you have to be certified. Mm -hmm. So that's number one for, the, for government and typically for most corporations. Mm -hmm. The other piece is that you want to monitor the, the actual RFPs that are coming out. So it's a lot of work, but you do want to monitor them because you can, they, when you fill out, once you're certified, you'll have to go back in and put your, what, uh, you all familiar with your NAICS codes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you put your NAICS codes in and then they'll send you RFPs that correspond to the NAICS codes, right? That, meaning the services that you offer. But sometimes it's not an exact science, right? The, the technology isn't as probably good as it should be on these sort of procurement database websites. So I encourage you to check back, like maybe set a schedule for yourself where you're going and you're checking for yourself to make sure that you're not missing a potential opportunity. I think also once you sort of build, if you identify a few government agencies where you think you could have a good fit, and it might even just be a question of talking to your local council person, mm -hmm. right? And, and going to meet with your local council people, introducing yourself, your business. Uh, when you have an opportunity, invite them because they can, they'll tell you, they'll recommend you, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you about things. So invite them. Like if you're doing a big activation with influencers, invite folks, right? Invite private sector folks that you're um, targeting. Invite government people that you're targeting. That's one of the best ways. And don't ask anything of them. Just invite them because yeah. they can see for themselves because that's letting your work lead the way yes. and it's building that relationship. Yes, powerful. Thank you very much, Sarah. Please. Hello, my name is Adolphus Fletcher of Platinum Infinity, where we enable your success in business development and web design and funnel design. All right. All right. Anyway, <laughs> so my question is um, centered around the programming you guys have in place. Is there any pipelines? Is there any like landing pages you can send people to to start the process to prepare, learn, and like you know start to get into this procurement industry? So resources about how to learn companies. more about it. Yes. That. I know for sure Black Enterprise has a number of resources on that, articles and things they've done, but maybe our panelists have some favorite government or whatever websites Any, anybody want to jump in with? Okay, sorry, uh, let me stop you. I okay. don't want you to misunderstand. What I mean is like within your companies, ah, okay. mm -hmm. 
is there any pipelines programs do you have to kind of reach out to people and prime them and get them ready to work with you? Thank you for the clarification. Was there anything? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, one, I would say from a FedEx perspective, um, we have a bunch of programs. We work with, um, you know, a bunch of uh, different organizations, WeBank, NMSDC, mm -hmm. uh, uh, MMDC, um, you know, Go to the website, Supplier Diversity, uh, FedEx, just Google that, and you'll get, a, you'll get a chance to see all of the things that we're doing. We actually work with uh, one uh, uh, um, program, ICIC, where it actually partners with small companies mm -hmm. and goes through- Based in Boston, our, right? Yeah, like based in Boston, yeah. yep. Um, um, works with uh, small companies, goes through RFP processes, high yield, uh, takes them through how to raise capital, and, and we actually nominate some of our um, diverse businesses to be a part of those programs, and we actually leverage uh, some of the the recipients or the graduates of that program in terms of extending RFPs and things of that nature to them. So I would just say, you know, we have a supplier diversity site out uh, at FedEx that has a lot of information about our supplier diversity program and some of the things that we do and partners that we have, and so maybe that's a start. And Michelle, I'd love to hear from you one second, but one thing I'll add to what uh, Quincy said, note as well that Quincy, a lot of the organizations he rattled off here are not from FedEx. What, he's, what I'm hearing, just to echo, Quincy's saying FedEx, billion dollar company, we're partnering with nonprofits and others who then either distributing the money or the knowledge or connecting us to others. So those, keep in mind, as Tara and, and Michelle have echoed, you don't have to go to, to FedEx directly necessarily. You don't have to get Quincy, I need your number. Yeah. No, maybe the local chamber president in Tennessee, maybe the local nonprofit that has five people in a cubicle in San Francisco, talk to them, go to their program, they know exactly people who need to talk to. It may not be Quincy Michelle, if you get what I mean. So these nonprofits, which are all over America, mm -hmm. have access to a lot of this knowledge. Michelle, anything you want to thank you add to that regarding the resources you'll have? We have the same. Yeah. Um, our supplier diversity site has, we have partnerships with these certifying um, agencies as well. And even with our source to pay tools, so we're in the Ariba network, there is a task. Every time there's a sourcing quest, they have to do a supplier diversity analysis. I get a, uh, a or my team gets a trigger. Um, and then we send those requirements to those agencies. We're also partnering with a company that has a database and a portal of uh, diverse businesses as well. So that, and then our procurement website shows you how you need to be, what you need to register as a supplier of Nationwide. That way we have a list already of people who've already registered, we confirm their, their certification, and we can start to send them um, opportunities. I love it. Please, next. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Uh, my name is Tola. Uh, I'm the CEO of Perspective Developers. Uh, it's a tech agency based out of Denver. We just opened up a second location here in Philadelphia. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Congratulations. My question is for, um, my background's in fleet management logistics, so when the guy said FedEx, you know, we spoke a similar language. Um, my question is this, uh, we have two current logistic platforms that are running based out of Denver. They have over 150 trucks. All their applications are run through our platforms. But one thing I've realized is when I get to like certain places, certain meetings, how do I get in those rooms? Because you mentioned proof of work. My work speaks for itself. Right. So how do we now accelerate where I can get to the person that's going to make that final decision? Okay. No, great question. I'm glad you asked the question because I wanted to hit on some of that as we were talking about this um, earlier. I think, as Tara was talking about, there's a lot of information in terms of registering on the website and all those things, right? That's where you always want to start. But to me, there is a critical component of this, and, we, and everyone's talked about it a little bit, and that's all around networking, mm -hmm. right? It's, I, trust me, right? Everyone knows it's a difficult thing, right? Because you, you, you have to start somewhere, you gotta find someone, uh, and you don't know exactly who that person is, but I think the point is you, you gotta start somewhere, right? And you gotta figure out through networking who is the ultimate decision maker, right? right? So don't know about uh, uh, Michelle and, and Nationwide, but from a uh, FedEx perspective, a lot of times from a sourcing and procurement perspective, we are helping to facilitate the process a lot of times, but we're not always the decision makers. It depends on what the category is that we're buying and That's you know, a bunch of other variables. So you know, sometimes the decision maker is within our organization, but most of the time it's not, 
right? And so what you have to do is network so you understand the dynamics of the company and the category that you're trying to sell and who are the decision makers. Now, once you understand who those decision makers are, you can't leave the source and the procurement guys out because right. they still involve <laughs> in the process and helping to make sure that your story's told and mm -hmm. you know they have influence on those decision makers. But you have to get to the decision makers as well. And to answer your question, that helps in terms of making sure you're getting in the room. You're making sure you understand the dynamics mm -hmm. of the, the, the culture and the organizational structure so you know who are the decision makers and the support. And you know, you're crossing those boxes so that when your name comes up, you're getting the appropriate consideration to get into the room. Mm -hmm. so. Sarah, please. That's an awesome question. You're right. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I, I, would, I would also add to that that I'm like a dog with a bone when I want something. Like when I'm going after work, I will not be denied, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I was trying to get my certification with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, now mind you, I used to work there. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling like through the process of the certification. But I, I got to a point where they were asking me for something and it just didn't fit my business. I'm not an engineer, I'm not an architect. So I started to look at the different workshops that they were hosting. And I found the woman who was the head of the um, certification process. And I saw she was going to be speaking somewhere. I got there early. Yes. And I was there. And I came. And I brought her my stuff. And I said, here's the roadblock that I've hit. I need your help. Mm -hmm. And so she said, email me on Monday at 9 AM. I emailed her Monday at 8.30 AM. I scheduled the email so I would not forget. Right. And then I told her what was going on. She connected me with someone and then I completed the process and they did a workaround because what I was saying was legitimate. Yeah. But I say that to say, make sure that you're going to some of these, if you're trying to specifically get in front of certain people, they often speak at things, they do things. I mean, sometimes I'll go to things like multiple times because I didn't get to have the conversation I wanted to have with that person. So I find out the next thing that they're going to be at. And I'm at that thing. And I mean, one guy said to me when I was early in the business, he's like, you again? Because I was literally sitting in the front row and he remembered me. He was like, oh, you again? He was like, my biggest fan is here. Right. But uh, but like be dogged. And so when, when I talked about earlier, like really having a plan for yourself, and I'm sure you have a plan for your business, you wouldn't be in logistics if you didn't, but have a plan for the marketing side of your yes, business. Yeah. Like, And that plan shouldn't just be like, oh, we're gonna advertise on this. It should be like, I'm gonna spend this much time and this much money going to these events, right? If you don't already have that, like it should be a broad plan um, that includes the actual like relationship side of it too, and budgeting your time for that as well. I think this looks like it may be the last question, but good. But I just want to say one thing about this. Thank you so much for asking your question. Amazing question. I just want to say something about the power of networking. I, what I'm hearing is there's two sides to pretty much all business, but especially this procurement. There's the technical aspects that must be done right, legally and compliance and all this stuff. But as uh, Tara just gave a great example, Tara didn't know that you have to check the small little gray box on a white background below. Only Michelle knew that. Nothing negative, nothing bad. It's just, and by her, so my point being is that that's been one big thing that's helped my business. In fact, didn't we do it just today, Ronnie? There was somewhere getting here, there's a gate that people said you can't go through. Guess who got through the gate? We got through the gate. <laughs> Before I got to the gate, the people who had control of the gate were laughing. We were like, they didn't even know we, were we weren't best friends. They thought we were best friends because how I approached them before I came to the gate. They didn't even ask for ID or nothing. And I came in. <laughs> so my point being is that that's an example Sometimes it's not the business, it's not, you know, if the paperwork's important, but the other half, the relationship. We're not gonna do anything illegal, but we can definitely point you and say, you know what, mm -hmm. thank you for seeing me, but guess what? You need to see Ed. He has lunch at 12 at the Starbucks. Go say hi. That's the game. So people, learn to play the game. The better you play the game, the more you will win, the more you will win, the more money you make, the more money you make. God bless America. <laughs> Please. Love it. That's awesome. So my name is Dawn Williams. I am the manager of supplier diversity for MasterCard. So first I'd like to say fantastic panel, great tips and advice um, that you've given these entrepreneurs. Um, I'd like to, if I may, add three. Um, one is um, perception is reality, right? Um, so I still get entrepreneurs that use Gmail for their business yes. email 
the perception is it's not a business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, Michelle talked about certifications. Um, my recommendation for suppliers is always, um, if you can, certify in all of the areas for which you fit. So if you are a woman and um, black owned, minority owned, if you are a veteran, get in all of them because you don't know which um, initiative that you fit in with any particular company. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing is um, we know that climate change is real and that is a major priority for corporations, so sustainability, net zero. What in your capability statement and you know, have a one pager, the, the presentation is fantastic. Sometimes we don't have the opportunity to go whole, get a whole presentation, a one pager, but make sure that you address how you are addressing sustainability um, in your business. Um, and that will help to elevate the conversation as well. And by the way, thank you for being a part of the whole experience uh -huh. as well, you and your team. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the privilege of being here today. Uh, by the way, Tara or Quincy or Michelle, any last word quickly you wanted to add? Anything that I didn't mention you wanted to add? Or we're good? Okay. No, so listen, good. I just want to say thank you all for being here today. This has been, I think, a powerful session. I believe we've opened up a lot of your eyes to new ways to do things. There's the technical detail, which is important. And all of that is Googleable. But I think the thing that's not Googleable, and I think all of you should take a class if you haven't, are learn the art of building relationships. Mm -hmm. There's a book I highly recommend called The Like Switch. It's how the FBI recruits spies in America from an FBI agent. Learn that book. It will teach you how to talk to people and get Quincy to think he's your best friend. And he's not your best friend, <laughs> but he'll think he is, and Michelle. So listen, thank you all for being here. What's yes, the book was called Like Switch. Like switch. Can we give Tara a round of applause? Can we give Quincy a round of applause? Can we give Michelle a round of applause? And one more time, all together, I gotta do it. Nationwide is on your side. All right, Quincy, thank you very much. I think we're supposed to stay right here oh, we're for stay a here? quick photo. Oh, okay. Yes, we're gonna. Okay. And then after the amazing panels will be here to talk to you, but I believe we were told to stay here for a minute, I believe. I don't know if we are. What do you think, Lisa? I don't, if there's a photo, you know what? Hey, Ronnie, you mind just doing a quick photograph of us? I don't think the photographer's in the room. Would you mind? Oh, Selena, are you? What's up, Selena? How are you? Thank you for having me here, Selena. Oh, thank you. I think it's the right way. Thank you.